more proof of his love, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared heaven himself for you. I have prepared for my righteous worshippers what no eye has seen, nor what ear has heard, nor what could pass by any human mind. Do you see the love? Another proof is that he trials you. He sometimes trials you to raise your love in heaven, and that's because he loves you. And he sometimes trials you to purify you from a sin that would have led you to hell because he loves you. And he trials you sometimes to remind you of his blessing on you and what happened to you when he took that blessing from you. So you remember him and thank him, and that's out of his love for you. And he trials you sometimes so that you see the truth of this world and miss heaven and long to meet him, and that's out of his love for you. And he sometimes trials you so that he can teach you how to accept his doings and his wisdom, and that's also out of his love for you. And he trials you sometimes so that he may achieve in you what you, would make you enter heaven without judgment. How's that? Surah Zumar, verse 10, it says, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرُهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ Those who patiently persevere will truly receive a reward without measure or without judgment. From his love for you, he doesn't want you to expose you to the long stand and wait on the day of judgment. He loves you and fears that you'll get tired from waiting for the day of judgment and though for the judgment. And those who enter heaven without judgment are the patient ones. A sabreen. Bear some troubles in this life so that you may enter heaven without previous judgment. A wife that tires you out, but you bear and be patient and have mercy on her, so that you may be from those who are patient and enter heaven without a previous judgment. A husband that's difficult and hurts your feelings, be patient. People in their troubles, be patient. If you can't give birth, be patient. So and so, son died young, be patient. Those who patiently persevere will truly receive a reward without measure or judgment. And as if he is testing you to, to purify you, because he loves you. Because he wants you to go to heaven. He doesn't want you to enter hellfire. Subhanallah. Wallahi, believe me, it's out of his love that he trials you and then turns this trial into a blessing. Look at the prophets, for example. Nuh or Noah, peace be upon him, is made fun of, beaten up till he faints out. And it's not long time before he gets what? He gets this, everything gets destroyed and he's saved on an ark and his enemies perish. Ibrahim, peace be upon him, is thrown in the fire, but after a while he's uh, honored among the entire humanity and saved. Ismail to be slaughtered by his father, lays there in obedience to God's command and then saved. Yaqub or Jacob, peace be upon him, loses his side out of sadness over Yusuf or Joseph, parting, uh, Joseph's parting, but it isn't long until they re reunite again and he gets his sight again. Subhanallah. And Moses working as a shepherd for 10 years and then is honored by God to become Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's interlocutor, the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks with, Kalimullah. And Jesus, peace be upon him, and how his virgin mother was accused, and then he and his mother Mary or Miriam become of Allah's greatest creation, subhanAllah, and our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how he was called an orphan, and how no one wanted to nurse him, and how he got expelled from his homeland, and then we see him in Mi'raj, the trip to heaven, put in such a high place by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then he returns to his homeland Mecca, victorious, telling his enemies, go, you are free, idhabu antum tulaqa. Does he love us or no? Does he love us or no? Okay, how do I know if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves me or not? From the signs that show that he loves you is that he protects you from this life. He doesn't let all like the worldly things control you all the time. From the signs of his love is that he makes you remember him all day. One of the followers said, if you see God giving someone lots and lots despite his sinning, know that he's being allured by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? From the signs of his love is that he makes you religious. So basically, you find yourself trying to approach religion, even if you're far away and just in the beginning of the road, but you're trying to get closer daily, that's a sign of his love. So our sister who hasn't worn hijab yet, but is on the path and intends on advancing, then she's walking on the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love. And what is the proof for that? It doesn't need to be any clearer. If you find yourself going with haste to practicing religion, know that this is the evidence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Almighty's love. This is a very, this is very, very promising Allah. From his signs of his love is that he makes you become knowledgeable in your religion. And this also happens gradually, just like becoming religious. So if you know very little of your religion, then you learn how to recite with proper tajweed. And then you memorize the 30th chapter. And you had never memorized anything before. These are all signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love to you. So what if you memorize Surah Al-Baqarah or Ali Amran? How much does he love you then? From his signs of his love is that he teaches you how to be hum humane or kind. Because kindness... Kindness makes you patient and forbearing. A person who's always tense and quarrels over every little big and small thing is a sign of being far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ says, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a family or people of a house, he bestows them with kindness or makes them become kind and humane. 
إن الله إذا أحب أهل بيت أدخل عليهم الرفق and therefore you become humane and kind with people and never harm them from his sign of his love is that he facilitates obedience for you he places things that would make you come closer to him in your path or in your way so there's a third certain thing that you don't want to do right so you pass in front of a mosque and you find a huge crowd of people listening to a lecture and then you hear what they're saying you hear the talk and you like it so you come and attend another time then you start praying these are signs of his love he opens for you the path to obeying him so you find a friend who calls you up and reminds me of praying Aisha or wakes you up for Fajr or 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 doesn't this apply to all of us right now Allah's signs of his love for us is it not facilitated obedience that I'm here right now and that you're listening to this lecture right now can you imagine brothers and sisters that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can love and be pleased with thousands of people just by facilitating to them what makes them closer to him from his signs of love to you is that it makes it difficult for you to commit a sin you try by all means to commit that sin. You'll try by all means, a certain sin that you can't stop doing. You're used to committing a certain sin and you can't resist. You find that things get difficult and you and you're the way to it, you just can't do it. You have an argument with your father, so he shuts down the internet, so you can't watch something that's inappropriate or chat with someone that you shouldn't be talking to. From his signs of his love is that he takes your soul while you're doing good deeds. You meet الصالح. He makes you end your life with doing good. And believe me, this is very, very important. People, a lot of people live in obedience but die sinning. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says in the hadith, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his certain servant, he sweetens him, asalahu, coming from the word asal or honey. So the companions ask, what does asalahu or sweetens him mean, ya Rasulullah? The Prophet said, he is led to doing good deeds before he dies until his neighbors or those around him are pleased with him. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, says, if one of my feet was inside heaven and the other was still out, he still wouldn't feel safe. He was still feeling scared. So when you're sinning, fear that you might die on it. Die while still committing it. I beg you, don't die while sinning. Be careful. Be careful what you're doing. You don't know when we're going to die. Now let's look at examples of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved. So that you may know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do with you when he loves you. The first example that we must mention is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I don't know what to mention or what not to mention. What or what or what. There's so many things. But I'll say just one incident. When the revelation was stopped from coming down on him, peace be upon him in Mecca. The revelation had stopped for a while from coming down on the Prophet ﷺ. It was said it had stopped for six months. And it was said it had stopped for two years and lots of other sayings. But it was most likely six months. So imagine, six months, Angel Jibreel no longer descended upon our beloved Prophet ﷺ. And without any prior notice. What happened to the Prophet ﷺ in these six months? Imagine if you were in his place. What would have happened? A great feeling of inner pain and fear. A feeling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is he not pleased with me? Has he left me? Have I done something wrong? And the Prophet ﷺ had been through hard times. And the word had spread out between Quraysh that the revelation had stopped coming down on him. And they started telling him, Your Lord has bid you farewell, Muhammad. Your Lord has left you. Wadda'aka rabbuka ya Muhammad. But look to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love to the Prophet reveals Surah Al-Duha Wal-Duha Wal-Layli Ida Sajah Ma Wadda'aka Rabbuka Wa Ma Qala By the glorious morning light and by the night when it's still the guardian Lord hath not forsaken thee nor is he displeased He is telling him Is it possible for your Lord to forsake you or be displeased with you Muhammad? Whoever knows this surah will really love it and whoever understands it will know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love to the Prophet it's one situation where Lord has not forsaken you, nor is he displeased with you. He's telling him, how could you think like that, Muhammad? And then the verses go on. Did he not find thee an orphan and give thee shelter and care? And as if he's telling him, how can you say that he forsake you? Have you forgotten what he did with you when you were born? Weren't you an orphan and he took care of you? And look here at the word, awa, sheltered. People go to their homes to be sheltered by it. And who sheltered you, O Prophet Muhammad? وَأَنْتَ مَنْ أَوَاكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shelter you. أَلَمْ يَجِدْكَ يَتِيمًا فَأَوَى And also look at the beginning of the surah and the setting of the time of dawn break, a very gentle early time of the day, and then by the night when it falls down on earth and everything is still, there are beautiful soft times that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by. He didn't swear by the whole night and its darkness, but إِذَا but سَجَمْ When it's still and there's a lovely breeze, when it's gentle and tender, subhanallah, he started the surah by swearing with these tender, beautiful times of the day that he created. 
Imagine when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves someone, He tells them these words. Imagine these words are from Allah subhanahu 